Good afternoon to you. Mark Sutter, HurricaneTrack.com here with your off-season, it's still off-season, uh, Hurricane Outlook and Discussion. We do have something to talk about. It is May the 12th, 2020, so hello, let's get right into it, all right? Don't waste any time. In the Atlantic, this got everybody's attention today. Yes, it's still the off-season, but this probably is going to be the sixth year in a row that we have pre-June 1st development in the Atlantic Basin. It's this area of interest here that the National Hurricane Center, as of 10 o'clock this morning, giving a 50% chance for development over the next five days. What is it? Well, they're expecting an area of low pressure to develop this weekend, a couple hundred miles northeast of the Bahamas. And from there, they surmise that environmental conditions do appear conducive for the system to acquire some subtropical characteristics as it moves northeastward through Sunday. They will issue another outlook on this system uh, later today or tonight, maybe earlier. Um, what does all of this mean for the future of the hurricane season? Well, I'll give you the short answer to that, probably very little. Uh, we'll get to look at this in a second via satellite, but that's the outlook area. And again, it's towards the weekend. Today is only Tuesday. So this is gonna happen down the road a spell uh, it's not an immediate concern. There may be some squalls down here. And we'll look at that actually in the forecast in just a moment. So going to the evidence, what do we have out there that helps to support the notion that something might develop? Well, if we look at the evidence, uh, starting with the vorticity signature at 5,000 feet in the atmosphere, there's your energy right there. Some of it, you know, it's this old frontal boundary, kind of a focusing mechanism. Uh, other little pockets of energy sitting out here. We talked about that yesterday on the much longer version. The weekly part of this discussion, the addition, was yesterday. And we, we did. We talked about how in the higher latitudes you got these big areas of energy uh, through the winter and spring. And once we get into the summer months and tropical cyclone season, these will start to die off and they'll start to increase down here. But in between... You get these sort of hybrid storms, and that's what this is probably going to be, a subtropical storm, which means that it has characteristics, think of it as a mutt, right? Like a dog that's got four or five different breeds or whatever. Maybe that's too many, but you get the idea. You know what a mutt is, hopefully. So this is kind of like that, a subtropical storm. The energy is a little bit more spread out over a larger area. It's not quite as concentrated and as compact and focused, especially the wind field, as a classic tropical storm. It has characteristics of subtropical or mid-latitude storm systems that are more sprawling and spread out, as well as some tropical characteristics. It's, it's a little bit of a mix of both. And so instead of the uh, Weather Service and the National Hurricane Center calling it a mutt storm, because that just wouldn't work, uh, it's called a subtropical storm. That's just the scientific name for it, the meteorological terminology. It still generates a, a wind field. It's just larger, spread out, more of a sprawling system than it is focused. And we'll be able to see that take shape as we watch this area of energy here start to come together. Right now, it's, it's all spread out. As you can see, it's linear. We need to see if it starts to focus with some more of these colors here which indicates higher levels of spin or energy or vorticity. Um, we're not going to get into the physics of it, but this is the easy part is just looking to see how it changes, what we call the morphology of it over time, how it changes over time, how it evolves and morphs from um, this more spread out piece of energy to one that's more resembling a tropical storm or a subtropical storm in this case. And you can see it on the satellite imagery here, the actual, what we call the true color loop here from Tropical Tidbits. And as I mentioned yesterday, this too is a satellite image. It's just seeing a different, um, not spectrum, what's the word I'm looking at, a different aspect of the atmosphere. This is picking up on vorticity instead of clouds. This is obviously clouds. And so here you go, there it is, it's all, uh, spread out and you know that old frontal boundary uh, and the energy is going to try to come together right through here and it's just going to take some time so we will watch and see as that evolves and the beauty of this is we can see it evolve 
in the crystal ball here that we call the GFS, among other models. And we're going to look at the GFS, and then we'll look at the Euro real quick. So here's the global forecast system. This is the area that you want to watch right through here. I'll draw a nice orange box around it, as terrible as that box is. There it is, nonetheless. Um, this is 36 hours from this morning, so this is uh, Wednesday night. There's 48 hours out, so this will basically be 8 a.m. Thursday morning Eastern Time. And you move out another 24 hours, there's 8 a.m. Friday. And look what's starting to happen right there. The energy is starting to come together uh, down in the northwest Bahamas, that region. And we keep going on out in time, 96 hours. It starts to focus more. Uh, got this nice area of high pressure building in at the mid-levels, down to the surface, over the top of it. This is some energy that's in, uh, kind of breaking into that. It's, it's a complicated process because this is not happening the same way that we see tropical storms and hurricanes that we're used to seeing, like Dorian as an example. That came from a completely different uh, source of energy in what's called um, a tropical wave, an African easterly wave, uh, last year, late August of last year. Those originate off of Africa as impulses of energy and low pressure and just a slight turning in the atmosphere. This is a different method, but the results are generally the same. You can get tropical storms and even hurricanes if these things sit out over warm water long enough. But this doesn't have much warm water to work with. It's going to be, like I said, uh, very loosely organized, and it looks like everything froze up on me. Wow. There we go. It's back. <laughs> My um, computer was being funky. That's fine. Let's keep going. It's going to be much more spread out. And as I move through the time frame here to hour 120, and I just won't bring the webcam back on, so unless uh, maybe at the end. Um, hour 120, it, it's a little bit more concentrated there. But again, it's got that look of subtropical characteristics. There are a couple of interesting features. There's kind of an arm right there, maybe another arm right there. So it starts to get that look of a tropical storm. It's got that S shape overall. See that right there? That's the big key that I look for in the modeling. And, and again, this is a computer simulation. This is the numeric weather prediction from the GFS uh, out to five days. And uh, just for fun, we can go out to day six. And you see it, it kind of uh, moves on off uh, between Bermuda, which is right there. Right there is Bermuda. I'll draw for you. Right there is Bermuda. So to the northwest of Bermuda, probably bring some strong southerly winds, uh, maybe some rain, which you guys could use the rain. Fresh water is always a good thing when you're in the middle of the ocean on a rock or several rocks, as Bermuda is made up of. And then it moves on out, and that's that. Trough comes in, kicks it out. So it's one of these sort of hybrid systems, like I said, and it is not going to be a problem, even as it gets its genesis down here with all of this energy milling around near Cuba, parts of the Bahamas, the Southeast Florida Straits. Um, it's not, it's rain, okay, rain and some gusty winds, but don't get upset about this and think, oh, here it comes. They said it's going to be a busy season and oh my gosh, it's already starting. We've had these going back to, you know, several years, five in a row now, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19. Each of those seasons um, had storms that formed before June 1st. It's just the norm lately, and maybe we just need to change the hurricane season or the tropical cyclone season, as it were, um, to May through November. But that's not up to me. It's not my call. So that's the GFS. Here's the Euro. The Euro is not quite, we don't get the resolution or the, the temporal or the time resolution that we get on the GFS, at least not on this site. Um, tropical tidbits. It's every 24 hours here. So here we are. That's 24 hours from this morning. And again, the area we're going to focus on is right in here. I'll draw it in a big red circle for you. There's 4872. The energy start to congeal a little bit. Uh, by 96, there it is. Um, and just leaving the Bahamas. And at 120, the euro is a little bit more focused. And by 144, 168, off it goes as well. So the European and the GFS, two major global models indicating that something should develop in that vicinity 
over the next several days. So we'll see what happens. Now, interesting that um, where it is, if we look at the sea surface temperature anomalies, the departures from normal, it would be moving into this. And you know what? Let me just zoom in on this. I can do that in the browser. So why don't we? So where would it be? It would be, let me use black here. It would be forming and doing its thing, if you will, in this area right here. You know, with some kind of a track right in there, maybe. So the sea surface temperatures there are a little warmer than average to right around where they should be. And then there's some mixing over here, so you have some below average. It's kind of a um, tightrope that it's going to have to walk. Uh, but you know what is really interesting? And I was going to bring my webcam back on because I like to talk to you, not at you. But apparently it's causing my computer to lock up. So I'll just talk at you for a moment. It's not just the warm water temperatures. The atmosphere at the jet stream level is a lot colder than normal in this area right now or in the next few days. And that is going to lead to a process that will foster the convection or the energy to really kick this thing off. And we're getting into some meteorology there that I don't want to lose you, but the instability is very important. And if the atmosphere is warm throughout the column, you don't get instability. It's capped. And storm chasers and people that keep up with tornadoes and severe thunderstorms know all about this. you got to have cold air over warm air. But when the cold air is like really cold over very warm, juicy uh, surface um, features like the warm ocean and the warm boundary layer, as we call it, the bottom there of the troposphere where we live, uh, then you get a lot of instability. And so there are other factors at play here, not just the warm water. And in fact, we can see that on a different version. This is the Reynolds method right there, Dr. Richard Reynolds and his analysis that he's come up with over the years. This is a weekly average. And again, the area that we'll be watching is over here. So a little warmer, but it depends on where it moves in terms of sea surface temperatures, a little warmer than average, and then maybe a little cooler than average. And so the process, the main process here, is the very cold air aloft to help kick this thing off and provide the instability. All right, so we'll watch that. Also going to watch this tropical storm, Vong Fong, that is the JMA. Uh, the Philippines designation for it is, um, what is it? Let me, Ambo, I forgot already. It's over here just off the coast of the Philippines, a tropical storm now. And this is what it looks like on the University of Wisconsin site. And the track forecast here, I think this is the JMA forecast that they use, but it could be from the Philippines, the Pagasa site, as I call it. Maybe I'm pronouncing it wrong, but P-A-G-A-S-A. Um, and no, I haven't memorized what that acronym stands for yet, but this is what it's looking like over the next few days, maybe becoming a typhoon as it moves in towards the area where Tisoy moved in last year, almost exactly the same area. Uh, so heavy rainfall, tropical storm to typhoon or hurricane strength winds possible, coastal flooding, that kind of thing, uh, Legaspi City and vicinity. Uh, yeah, you know, this is something you got to pay attention to. And I'm sure, as I mentioned yesterday with the uh, Pagasa site here, um, 6.1 million followers, that's getting it. So I think people are very aware of this. Uh, but this is the official bulletin here. Um, we'll get to that in a moment. This is a satellite snapshot from the Weather Nerds site. And again, the forecast suggests that it'll move in this way, maybe something like that overall. Uh, it's trying to get its act together. Um, you know, it probably does become a typhoon. Wouldn't surprise me. This is some of the warmest, deepest water. Well, the warm water is very deep. It is also deep, literally, in the world. The upper ocean heat content is what I should be saying. It's very high here in the Philippine Sea. And as such, it looks like it could become a typhoon. And uh, the Philippines area of responsibility for the Atmospheric Geophysical and Astronomical Services Administration. They're saying um, that, uh, yeah, it could become a typhoon. I think that's what they're saying. Is that right? Maybe it's different from the JMA. Let me just look, make sure. So the solid blue is a typhoon. So no, they don't bring it to typhoon strength from their office. 
that's a little, you know, you got the JMA, that's the Japanese Meteorological Agency. Uh, anyway, it won't surprise me if it becomes a typhoon. And, and, and we're just talking a few miles per hour difference in a scientific classification. It's a big weather system with a lot of rain over mountainous areas. There's a volcano down there. Um, our, our good man Brent, the Hurricane Track Patreon supporter slash field assistant, he, he went out there last December for Tissoy and filmed that volcano. What is it, the Mayon volcano, something like that? Uh, but yeah, this is a big deal, okay? Just because it's not a super typhoon with 160 mile per hour wind, it still is dangerous because of all that heavy rain. And you folks in the Philippines, keep an eye on this just to acclimate you. Maybe you're not from the Philippines or you're new to the Philippines. The system is currently located out here. You're going to be heading towards the northern part of the Samar Island and up again towards Legazpi and this peninsula down here. Uh, and then maybe curving up near Manila, big giant rainmaker for that region. And we will be watching it closely over the coming days. I'll see if I put my webcam on if it screws up the ending of this. So there you go. It's not June yet, and we have systems to watch. Um, the one in the Philippines area is the one that's more concerning for obvious reasons, because it's going to impact land. The system off that will eventually form off the southeast coast, if indeed it does form and becomes a named storm, its name would be Arthur. Whether it's subtropical or tropical, it doesn't matter. It gets the first name on the list this year, and that is Arthur. All right? And it might generate some swells and some rough surf. We'll deal with that later if the need arises. But don't worry about it. Don't let it upset you. It's just something we're keeping track of. And that's it. All right? All right. Yay, yeah, let me turn myself off. All right. I think my system's going to be kind to me today and not ruin this whole thing. Thanks for tuning in. As always, I do appreciate it. I am Mark Stott of HurricaneTrack.com. And yes, I will be back tomorrow. Tomorrow's actually a very busy day before I sign off. Uh, actually, I'll come back on real quick. I'm going to be on, and I'll tweet this, um, on a Zoom, Facebook Live kind of thing that we're doing with the National Tropical Weather Conference, which was canceled. It was supposed to be in early April. I'm going to be on tomorrow at 11 a.m. Eastern Time talking about data collection and how I do what I do with my team, the people that help me, how we fund it, all that kind of stuff, a history of it. Tomorrow, I will be the speaker, and then... Uh, also, tomorrow, 2 p.m. Eastern Time, uh, Hurricane U, tentatively, i just got to confirm it, I'll have Shay Gibson from Weather Flow down in Charleston. He will be my guest, tentatively scheduled, and just like I said, i got to make sure, and we will discuss along the same lines, data collection, and uh, all the instrumentation that Weather Flow has around the world. It's amazing. And um, also tomorrow, as I was trying to allude to and sign off, I'll talk about the tropics again. And I might just take that off season right there. Might just take that, darn it, off. And it'll just be the hurricane outlook and discussion. Because I guess it's already happening. Not hurricanes, but you get the idea. Anyway, have a good rest of your afternoon. Thanks for watching. I am Mark Suttoth. I'll talk to you again tomorrow.